got some fresh suckle marks on her as she sits across the right of the frame there. Someone going up to start aloe grooming her. She's reciprocating that. And off in the distance, far right, is one of the December 2006 survivor males. They're also in migrating for a few days and has returned just a few weeks back but from the September 2006 litters three animals appeared to be missing from that litter this time when the black Quran calls no one is responding Just the thought, it be interesting to record the incidence or frequency of response from a group upon returning to a burrow, whether they respond more often to calls when they first return to the burrow and less often when they're at the burrow for a few minutes. The same calls were given this time and they didn't respond. Again, we're always very careful not to make our reassurance calls when a group is alarmed at anything. So there's no association whatsoever to our calls except when the animals are totally relaxed with us being around them. And of course they've not been watching us staring at us when the danger was first noted. Dominant females still being groomed extensively. And after a period of spending almost an entire month or more at a single burrow system, the ticks and fleas and other internal parasites have started to accumulate in this area, no doubt. So there's a lot of social interaction like this and before too much longer this group is probably going to move to another burrow system and try and encourage the young to move with them or even carry them there. That's Jabulani moving across to the babies again, the dominant female. Babies are being huddled and groomed, but of course at this early stage of their lives there's no aloe grooming, the babies aren't grooming anyone back. That might only start to happen after about three or four months. And this loud whining sound from the babies is going to become even louder in the next couple of weeks when they start to move with the group and actively beg for food. That will last for three to four months. Something's alarmed them again in the distance. It seems to be a false alarm. call from one of the babies separated from the others. And immediately an attentive group member comes up, sniffs and grooms the baby and the distress call stops.
unwanted male emerging again, scent marking the entrance of the burrow. like a fortification with the babies huddled up safely in the middle while all these sentinels actively watch out for danger around the babies heads almost constantly swiveling around looking in different directions for possible danger approaching <laughs> the point of this video clip is to serve as a record of an unedited wildlife documentary on real wild meerkats that are not touched or handled, they're never fed, they're never captured, never experimented on. Returning to the babies in the afternoon, what you see is exactly what we're filming without any interference. We simply tolerate it as though we are objects. That these animals have become very familiar with over many, many years, thousands of hours of observation time here in the wild, the Meerkat Magic Conservation Project, Oatsa in South Africa. Cape Crow flying past almost like a black raven in appearance quite often it's a bird that will call if there are any potentially dangerous birds of prey nearby part of what we call a vigilance network or alliance in this neighborhood of the Meerkat Magic Valley and the black korahan calling again in the distance September the 11th, 2008.